So I mentioned a marine ice sheet instability, MISI, and this is a schematic of uh, the processes. So the most important concept uh, here is that the uh, warming is uh, going to ha create these things called marine ice sheet instability. So if the glacier is terminating uh, in the ocean, uh, and if it has a what is called a prograde uh, slope, so the uh, slope of the continent on which the glacier is growing is actually uh, s uh, uh, steeper as you go inland from the ocean side, then the uh, glacier tends to be uh, stable, whereas if it has a um, retrograde slope, so that it actually uh, begins to decrease uh, in height from the waterfront, then it becomes uh, unstable. So this is uh, a normal slope unstable or retrograde slope unstable. And this is normal st uh, slope stable. Um, okay, so if the glacier is on a reverse retrograde slope, that is with the bed elevation dropping. This is called the bedrock, which is, or the bed which is supporting the glacier to grow on top. Uh, which deforms the continent when it gets obviously uh, heavy enough uh, in addition to um, eroding whatever the soft material there may be uh, before. Okay, so there are only two stable states in this case. Uh, either it reaches the edge of the continental shelf here uh, or it becomes entirely afloat in uh, the ocean. Okay, so typically these marine ice sheet instabilities, uh, once they are started, uh, in principle they are unstoppable because there are processes uh, of glacier flow that are favorable which have initiated this process and we have no way of uh, stopping them. So obviously we don't want those things. So you can see here is the advance of uh, the glacier on to the uh, ocean or lake or whatever that uh, is uh, sitting here and a kind of a ice shelf is formed and you can have tides that are going to keep moving the ice sheet up and down for example uh, or they can be seasonal uh, retreats and advances and uh, as we saw in the case of the melting rates in uh, uh, 2011, 2012 versus 2019. Colder years like 2011, 19 can sometimes uh, stop the advance and even uh, create um, growth of uh, the glacier uh, and so on. Okay, so there are lots of details. We are obviously doing it in a very uh, heuristic way by looking at a schematic. So you can see that the stability depends on the shape of the continents that is supporting the marine terminating ice sheet. So one fantastic, spectacular, but sad uh, instability happened or Larsen B ice shelf that shattered uh, between January 31st and March 7 of uh, 2002. And you can see that this had already started uh, thinning. You can see this massive area here uh, on January 31. Uh, the shelf in lateral uh, uh, in late austral summer, so southern hemisphere summer, which is its uh, melting season. The dark blue melt ponds dotting its surface here. These are all already on the surface melt ponds, which are going to increase uh, the uh, absorption of radiation and uh, because of lowered albedo of the melt ponds. Uh, by March 7, the shelf is disintegrated, leaving thousands of silver uh, slivers of icebergs. So you can see that these are all broken pieces of this Larsen B ice shelf. So this made many people literally cry because this was global warming in action. Of course, uh, one has to be always careful to make sure that this was in fact related to the uh, atmospheric warming and ocean warming associated, but by now we have enough uh, evidence to argue that it is. This is another example of the uh, instability uh, at uh, Jacob Schawen Isbre Glacier uh, on Greenland. Uh, so you can see um, the background here is the Landsat image. It's a satellite that uh, m looked at uh, 
land uh, surfaces at very high resolution. This The image is from 7-29-2009 and dates shown here are successive carving fronts. So the fronts where the uh, glacier edge was and how far it has advanced. So 1851 up here, 1875, 83, 1902, 1964 and now 2009 it's way down here so you can see that the acceleration of the carving here for example from 2001 to 2009 is so this took uh, let's say 1851 to uh, 1950 this is like 100 years and this is uh, what about 65 years uh, advanced uh, this much okay so marine instabilities are already here this is the uh, Pineland glacier in the Amundsen Sea in Antarctica uh, early 1970s Pineland glacier is grounded at a bedrock so uh, it was somewhere here I think uh, warm inflowing circumpolar deep water so Antarctica is a channel and there is an Antarctic circumpolar current that keeps uh, going around from west to east and uh, warm inflowing circumpolar deep water melts the base of the glacier here so you can see the warmer waters coming in uh, mixing these are the various instruments there's a ship sitting there and there's some kind of a glider and a float that's monitoring waters and properties and heat content and so on and so forth so the glacier steepens and accelerates so if you have ice flow happening this way thinning and recession happens here melting underneath happens a lot so before people thought the melt was mostly from the surface but actually now we know that lots of the uh, much faster uh, melting by orders of magnitude is happening actually uh, underneath so today uh, the ROV here the remotely operated vehicle monitors glacier uh, thinning and receding so this ability to observe the ocean has improved a lot and actually has advanced our understanding a lot this is showing the change in ocean heat content from 1993 to 2019 this is uh, the satellite period there are satellites like um, Topix Poseidon and Jason and uh, various other satellite altimeters uh, flew that uh, can measure sea level which is an indication of the ocean heat content but now later years from 2004 or so we also have uh, the um, floats that are going up and down in the ocean and measuring warming and uh, other properties like oxygen and so on so as we have said before, the uh, heat content increase is not uniform, but there are some hot spots like here and here in the western boundary currents, here in the high latitude. Uh, Indian Ocean is warming because it receives heat from uh, the Pacific here and from the uh, Southern Ocean from below the surface. Here, because it's closed off, it has to rise and come back up and the processes create warming. The Southern Ocean is full of uh, what are called eddies, or it's very um, choppy and very um, full of these little uh, cyclones in the ocean and anticyclones, which create these uh, strong patterns. But one has to get a good sense of just how much heat uh, this is, okay? This may look like a small number, watts per meter squared of uh, heat content, but when you distribute it over uh, 700 meters, uh, that's enormous amount of uh, energy just a centimeter of the ocean uh, global ocean warming by a little bit can hold as much energy as uh, the electricity produced in a whole year so heat content of the water is very high and ocean holds lots of heat and uh, in fact more than 90 percent of the additional energy uh, from anthropogenic activities because of the increased greenhouse gases the additional energy that's being trapped 90% of it is going into the ocean and around Greenland and Antarctica this is uh, bad news right because that's going to uh, melt glaciers from below and create marine uh, ice sheet instabilities uh, which are bad news for glaciers and glacier melt